right. So I gave you guys the introduction to how year over year reports on resale provide hints of the reality of what's happening in sneaker resale. So what we're jumping into now in this podcast and is a lot of data. Now, if you're watching this, you're okay. If you're listening to this, I'm going to do my best to try and explain it in a way where it makes sense to what you're hearing. And it, it should, because the first part of this is really built around the StockX uh, 2024 report on the state of resale. Now, in that report, there were a lot of different um, topics that were covered. So what I wanted to do was give you what StockX said and then give you my response to what they say is taking place. So th this is going to allow for a real discussion on how StockX is explaining what's occurring in sneaker resale. So when reading their commentary, it has to be framed as a private platform who doesn't share its revenue attempting to place a positive spin on a business which has cooled considerably. Is that clear? You have a private business that doesn't have to share their revenue, doesn't have to share their information until they're getting ready to go to an IPO and then they have to divulge everything about the company in, a, in the paper that they have to send off to where if they're going to list on the NASDAQ or something like that. But we're not there yet. This is still a private company explaining their own growth in a category that's cool. Um, so as a matter of fact, right, in the first part of this series, which you see over here to my side, that first part was called StockX Adjustments in a Cooling Resale World. In the first part of that series, I would not have been able to create that post on what they've been doing to adjust if there wasn't an issue in resale, right? If there was no issue at all, would they be making a lot of these adjustments? Probably not, especially when you consider the addition of Google AdSense. So like if you're looking next to me right now and you see this ad from Allbirds, that's Google AdSense. That's breaking up the, the content on my website. But I do it because it earns ad revenue, right? So if StockX is using... Google AdSense, there has to be a problem because Google AdSense takes you, if I clicked on this, which I can't click on my own ads because that's against the rules. If I clicked on this, it would take me to a completely different website and that means you would be leaving my content. So how is StockX framing this discussion on resale? I'll give you some quotes here. And these quotes are going to show a year over year brief on the brands doing well on stock X. Now in these different quotes, I'm going to add, if you're reading it on the website, I'm adding the notes in red that I'm writing and it's going to give you my thoughts on the reality of their statements. And it's going to be an explanation of why the information that stock X is delivering, it must be carefully considered. Um, so let's get into what StockX said. So I'm, I'm going to put these in quotes so you can read them here, but I'm also going to read it because it's, this is a podcast and I need to read it so you guys know exactly what has been said. StockX said in June of 2023, right? Going back a year here because I'm looking at year over year. This is what they said. New Balance continues to be our fastest growing core. The 9060 surpassed the 2002 R in terms of volume to be the second most popular model with the 550 still being number one. Now, here's my note, what I said in response. The report by StockX states New Balance is the fastest growing. The reality is the top 19 sneakers sold in the picture below, and I'm going to open this picture up so you can see it. Open in a new tab, boom. I'm opening it up so you can see it. All right. And what it shows in that picture, remember, it's a podcast. Some people are just listening. The top 19 sneakers sold in the picture below don't include New Balance. Now, you have New Balance making a claim that this thing is the fastest growing core. If you sold one shoe last year and you sell 10 shoes this year, it's obviously going to show us the fastest growing um, product. 
So you have to be careful with the way things are worded in a sense, right? Now, the only model for New Balance to crack the top 100 sneakers in 2023, in that June, that month, right, was the 990 version 6 Action Bronson Lapis Lazuli. What does that mean? That shoe in particular. Once again, if one sneaker sold in 2022 and two sold in 2023, that's 100% growth. You can write that you have considerable growth with New Balance. Nuance is needed. I said that at the beginning of this podcast and I'm going to continuously say it. The idea that in June 2023, they were talking about the 550 still being number one for New Balance's growth and that you had some other shoes coming on. How do you balance that against what they said for 2024? We're going to get there. I'm giving you more details from 2023. This is what StockX said. Crocs has remained hot, driven by new Salah Bimberry releases. We also expect the Taco Bell slides to continue to perform well into July and August. This is my note in response. There were three models of Crocs in the top 100 sneakers sold. They were all limited edition models with only the Lightning McQueen garnering true profit. After fees, the two other Crocs netted a small return for those sellers. So you have to kind of, if you can't walk into a regular retail store and grab it off the shelf and flip it, more than likely it's a limited release shoe, which means it's difficult to get. That means that the growth or that Crocs remains hot. It could be a case of Crocs being flipped between buyers, not necessarily people. So if you ask yourself, how many people have you seen wearing the Salahe Bimberries? More than likely you haven't seen a lot. StockX wrote this note. Once again, June 2023, Converse pace, Converse's pace has picked up, driven by below MSRP uh, CDG, that's Comme des Garçons, uh, collaborations. These items are included as hero items in our upcoming marketing campaign, so we expect good performance in the coming months. My note, this is what I wrote. This note is telling and was a true predictor of resale returning to its roots. If you read what they wrote, Converse Pace is picked up, driven by below MSRP CDG collaborations. You read that, not even a CD, a Comme des Garcons collab could pull in above retail value, and this is 2023. As a matter of fact, the CDG was available at the Converse outlet. I remember this in particular. With an additional amount off, which is why it's being sold or was being sold in 23 below retail. So think about that. Now, here's another note from StockX. I'm going to be doing this, everything that you see to your side. Those of you who are listening, I'm just reading the notes exactly the way they were. This is a note from StockX. While Nike and Jordan's releases continue to be relatively weak, we are seeing increased interest in closet stock. Items released more than four weeks in the past. All of the top 10 most popular sneakers in June were in closet stock. Here's my note. Boom. This is how resale always was. That's how it used to be. June 23 was also the month that the greater fool theory landed. Now, if you go back to this picture, in the picture, note, the three panda ducks, if purchased at retail, led to a loss for sellers, although they show a profit on the paperwork from StockX. But the panda ducks showed a loss for sellers. They weren't really a profit shoe. The only models with a solid return on investment are limited, coveted, hard to find models greater than four weeks old. The general release sneaker was no longer being bought out by new resellers looking to turn a profit. A look through social media will find countless videos of sellers discussing bricks. Shoes they bought in bulk with bots or by paying managers, which tanked. These bricks. June 2023 was pivotal in the return to normalcy. The greater full theory 
just basically hit it home. People were no longer buying those shoes, hoping to flip them anymore. The last note, last two notes here from StockX. First one, ASICS has performed well, driven by GR models of the JL Cayeno 14. This is an opportunity for sellers with access as they are selling around MSRP. This is super important, super important, because once again, and these are my notes. If you're looking, it's in red. If you're listening, this is my note. ASICS didn't have one model in the top 100. So StockX delivers you a report in 2023 that says ASICS has performed well, but they did not have one model in the top 100. And again, if you note the wording here, sellers with access. There's been a long-standing theory that retail accounts are dumping inventory on StockX. Now, that's been a theory. Nobody can prove it. Now, it's understandable that this conspiracy exists. According to the research on Outlet Zone, there are 86 ASICs stores in the U.S. Traditional accounts don't really carry ASICs, so arbitrage is difficult. Where could the pairs being sold at or below MSRP, where could those be coming from? If ASICs is performing well, where are the shoes coming from? That's something that we got to sit and think about. So let's get back to the final note, the final note from 2023. All right, the final note. Yeezy trades skyrocketed in June led by the restocks at the end of May, with price points now favorable for buyers. It's an opportunity for sellers to move units with pace for summer, particularly slides and runners. We expect more restocks in the coming months as Adidas sells through their inventory. This is my note in red. If you're listening, you're, this is the note that I wrote in response to that. Yeezy hit a wall in 2019, long before Ye and the Three Stripes divorced. The only models garnering resale have been the slides. And to be honest, that's because the retail price and resale price both land in the sweet spot of $75 to $120. I wrote a report on the job Moran, and I've talked about this before, and I said that there's a sweet spot for pricing for retail and brands. There's a sweet spot where they price something it can sell and it will sell very well when it's priced accordingly. The Yeezy slide is the only Yeezy really that's hitting resale numbers. Other than that, it has to be what StockX calls closet stock. It has to be closet stock and that's important, all right? It's extremely important. So that's the note. All of that information it's a lot to pull from because StockX has given us all of these statements and they've provided this data. And when you compare it year over year, it becomes apparent how the market finally landed from the inflated lofty position of the post COVID environment, that bubble that was created from 2020 to 2022, 23. Now, when you go in and read June, 2024, that commentary shows that the low to mid tier price point has to be kept in mind. You need to be thinking about the low to mid tier price point when we get to 2024. In 2022, I wrote a report and discussed a term I coined as assisted resale and unassisted resale. Now that's in this report, sneaker resale report and analysis, uh, January, 2022. Now I'm opening this up because I'm going to put the link in the description so you can go and read it. If you're listening to this, you go to the video, you go to the description and you'll be able to click through and read it. And I gave price tiers and those price tiers, the low, the majority of the items that I was doing research on 59 items sold 84 sold in the hundred to $150 price range, only 20 pairs sold in the 151 to $200 price range, one sold in the 200 to 250 and four sold in the 251 and up. Now this is individual seller information, but clearly the price tiers from the low to the mid are the most important price tiers, even on a resale platform like StockX, all right? 
So you come back and you keep in mind that that price point for 2024 when I get to it. When I came up with the terms assisted and unassisted resale, those labels allowed me to talk about sellers with access to sneakers at cost and how this allowed the majority of the third party prices to sit in the low to mid tier. At the time, I used to take mid up to $150. I later adjusted that number down to cap it at $120 when I wrote that Jaw 1 report. So now the Jaw 2 is out. We're in a completely different time. It's 2024. And what I'm going to get into in the next video is the 2024 information. This is a lot of stuff. And I expect you to ask questions. Please ask questions. I love getting into this and talking about it. Um, discussing the assisted and unassisted resale. Let me go back and find that information. And I gave those labels. This is what I called unassisted. Unassisted is the process of acquiring sneakers via legitimate methods. Unassisted is through legitimate methods. Retail purchasing, arbitrage, using the sneakers app to win elusive, more coveted pairs, buying wholesale, all legit without undercutting the system with technology. That's unassisted resale. Assisted resale is utilizing bots to grab an excessive amount of inventory of coveted sneakers. Now, it's also stolen product entering the resale market. There are a lot of instances where you see ports, um, like you saw in Los Angeles this past year, the seller that had all of the stolen shoes that came from the ports in Long Beach. And those shoes enter the resale market and it drives prices down. But that's an assisted resale. So when you have people that uh, may have discounts that they can use and they get it, that's more of an assisted resale method. Now, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. So that is it for the 2023 information. I'm moving into the 2024 information in the next video. I'll see you on that one. Thank you for watching. I know this is a lot. I really do, man. But please ask questions. If if any of it is confusing and you're like, yo, this is a lot, bro. I don't want to go. I understand it. It is a lot. And um, I just hope you're following along. And it's, you know, something that's going to help you in your conversations about resale and sneaker uh, retail. And that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. 2024 is coming up. We're still in the same article. I told you this one was going to be long. There's a lot of information here. A lot of information. See you guys on 2024, the next video. Peace.